Hi, right, welcome to a new cast for Starcast TV. I'm Royal Blue, and joining me is my co-caster Shruma Doom. And today we are casting a TVZ between Light and Action. And we have Light spawning as the yellow Terran in the top right, and Action in the bottom left as our pink, or is this a uh, peach? Sir, you're gonna have to tell me. <laughs> it looks like it's like I don't know, man. I'm, I'm slightly, I have a slight red-green color blindness, okay. <laughs> so I couldn't tell you if it's pink or anything like that. Yeah. Let's just call it pink, man. Um, actually, no. Let's call it peach. It looks more peach. I, I you know what? You you decide. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless of what color they are, we have them playing here on Polyport, and they are in cross position. So this is going to lead to. Another one of those more likely macro games where they take an expansion really fast and add on a bunch of workers because it's it's a long distance from our, uh, these players' bases to each other. So any kind of early attack or rush is gonna be you know hard to be successful. And already we see action just adding on drones, not going for any kind of early uh, spawning pool harass or uh, right. you know all in basically. I think we're going to see 12 hash coming out of action. That's what uh, I predict. Uh, I mean, nothing wrong. I mean, obviously, that's a really standard build. And yeah, you see two more drones being immediately made. It will it will be a 12 hash. Uh, on the Terran side of the map, Barracks coming down. We'll see if he tries to take a little bit more of an economical build. You know, there is one build where you can actually get your um, command center after your Barracks and first supply, and then add on your second supply. So it will give you a little bit of a economical boost because your command center finishes faster and plus you don't have to build your third depot that fast mm -hmm. because the command will provide some supply but um, remains to be seen right yeah that's definitely the almost one of the more greedy racks expand openers you can get away with is just uh, skipping that second depot so we're gonna see here it looks like he will skip the second depot he's definitely banking up a lot of resources Oh, and there is the second depot. So he is going for a, a little bit safer style where you can add on more uh, kind of marines earlier and kind of keep the marine production constant while taking an expansion. Which, right, considering yeah. he hasn't scouted yet, it's definitely this safer. This is the standard, like standard. the standard, standard Terran like build, right? Where you mm -hmm. get your second de like depot and then like <laughs> then you pour your command center. Here we see actually a third hatch for action before spawning pool. Was that? Was that before spawning pool? Yeah, that I I do believe that was. I mean, man, action. He keeps doing this, man. <laughs> he keeps going for for, for it's three so hatch. Crazy. Yeah, but it's working so far. This uh, three hatchery play, I think, for action. Uh, so uh, maybe he'll go for lurkers again here, or at least we'll see a hydralis then relatively soon here. Uh, right, looks like light. light gonna put yeah. on some uh, pressure, bring uh, SCVs and Marines down. But you know, again, you know, it, it's as you were saying, look at the distance. Yeah, like, those, those Marines have to run a marathon to get down to the <laughs> third game. Yeah, they're like, like so tired. They finally got there. <laughs> now they're trying to pick off this drone. But uh, what can he do with oh so few Marines? And there's actually Zerglings already on the way. So these Marines are gonna try to head out of here. And there's actually two drones for action that kind of got caught mm. out. What are these drones doing? If Light can get these two drones Ooh. in, ah, oh, no, he's not gonna get it. I was gonna say if he can get them, yeah, like um, that'll be like you know silver lining, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, Light has to turn around. You can't contest like three hatch larva this early, right? With 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 a small kind of push, just too many zerglings. So yeah, Light. Light will be, I do believe he will be falling back. He just picks off that one Zergling and he's going to fall back. So, I do think, again, Action has that advantage, right? He got away with it. Uh, three hatch before pool again, right? There's no advantage, basically. <laughs> yeah. So, what happens if you get, like, an 8 racks against this? Like, do you just immediately leave? Is that what Action would do? Like... I don't know, he's got the three three hatches with, uh, like you said, so he's got so much macro advantage against Terran. Uh, he can just add on as many drones as he wants right now. Right. 
Yeah. And um, he's forcing a bunker even for Light. So wow. Light forced all the way back to his side of the map now. He's adding on two more racks and he's also looks like he's going for an academy here. So this is definitely a bio play from our Terran player. Um, yeah, and with that academy to try to see scans and see the spire. Yeah, the Terran Academy was actually kind of delayed because he had to build a bunker even. I was just going to point that out. So, oof, I mean, Action taking such a lead. Okay, action he's going be... double Academy now. Okay, I mean, that, that can't be a mistake, right? I mean, he, I guess he's going to get Stimpaks and the U238 shells, also more commonly known as range at the same time. Uh, I mean, I this can't be a mistake. He must, like, he's yeah. probably going to get double upgrades at the same time. It must be because he delayed it so much, he decided he needed both of them at the same time to deal with Mutalist, uh, which we, I think so. Uh, yeah, we are yeah. going to see Mutalist here, so that might be the right call. Like, you know, what, one thing that is kind of going in, in Light's like, favor is that um, Action is actually going for like, like Spire, right? And uh, mm -hmm. the 5 racks plus 1 style that he's going, it, it's really, really strong against like 3 hatch Mutalist. It was actually designed as a counter to 3 hatch Mutalist, right? So. He's got that in his favor, at least, right? Yeah, I have not seen this double academy play before, um, or I think I've seen it in one other game from these two players. So going for this kind of play, you know, is very odd, but it, it could pay off here considering he has mind gamed action, and action is actually now doing exactly what he predicted, which is going for Mutalis off three hatch and then going into Lurkers. So we are going to see the Mutalis. Yeah, scan coming down, and uh, I think, yeah, uh, um, Light did see... Uh, Light did see the tech, so... He also spots the, like, the Hydra's den timing as well, so that's pretty nice. Okay, there's another scan. And he sees... Okay, there's only one colony here. So the Marines actually now, uh... Engaging with the Mutalists. And the Mutalists are kind of going to camp and try to do a counter attack. Light, Light's just going to head all the way toward Action's base. Action's Mutalists forced to turn around. I mean, you cannot stay and harass the Terran when a Terran army is moving out, right? Or else the Terran army will just overrun your base. So, pretty sure Action's going to bring his Mutalists back, try to harass some of the marines on the way and try to defend that as natural. Oops, and... Oh, you dropped me. Oh. Oh, my apologies. Okay, I think we're good, actually. Uh, but we can just continue on with the cast. It looks like... Uh, Light is moving out, as you mentioned, and he has crossed all the way over to the Zerg side of the map, which was, you know, quite a journey. And now finally he is engaged with the the uh, the Zerg across the uh Zerg's Zerg's the third. Yeah, and now he's Zerg's scouted third. the third and he sent over a group of Marines uh kind of right behind his first bio ball. And they were unscouted and they've made it all the way over here to destroy this hatchery. There's a few links now going over to clean it up. And he's actually not focusing down the hatchery. Ooh, yeah, I think that was a little bit of a mistake. If he could be stimmed, he probably could have gotten that hatchery. That would have been huge. Uh, but, you know, uh, nevertheless, right? Uh, the game yeah. will go on. Yeah, that Middle was and... very close. Uh, almost getting that hatchery. Could have made a huge difference. Now we see Zerg's already able to start putting some defense over there, getting a lurker. And now, what can Terran do? They can't really bust the net, so uh, they're forced to kind of back just to do a soft contain right now yeah a uh, light just uh, posturing in front of actions base trying to get some map control crucially trying to keep those needles at you know at the zerg home and not over the terran harassing right this is the power of the five racks plus one you have so many bio units so early so you can really control the map right uh let's looks like a light rotating north try to maybe hit that base but uh one lurker already morphed Two more on the way, so I don't think Light will be able to break it. Lurkers in position on top of the ramp. And I mean, good luck to Marines trying to, you know, go up a ramp. The Lurker is on top, right? 
Yeah, the way Action is playing this is totally abusing the mobility of Zerg right now. He's so happy just running around on the map with his Lynx and his Mutalisk. And the, the bio is kind of not quick enough, but maybe he's caught the Zerg out of position. He's able to scan and see there. Oh, there is some lurkers here hiding underneath those overlords. So I do not think Terran is going to want to stim it, run in here. Especially considering that the, the Mutalists are now in position to defend this base. But what is Terran to do? He again is in a position where I think he kind of he needs to do some damage here. He's not going for a siege tank timing though. He's going just into all vessels. Yeah, it's a it's a smart play. I mean, any kind of siege tanks would basically be you know just a waste of money at this time. The filer mount is done, right? Uh, so. Uh, we know that the files will be coming out with Dark Swarm soon, and of course, Dark Swarm, that spell, you know, so, so powerful. Meanwhile, Zerg... Yeah, actually a group of Zerglings and Mutalis able to take out uh, a small amount of Marines and Medics that were holding that third base location for Terran. And now that that, that group has been destroyed, uh, Terran's actually forced back and they, they, they're in their net, kind of just defending right now. They're not able to contain the Zerg, and Zerg actually could take a fourth base here if he wanted to. And with the yeah, Nidus network uh, up, uh, this, yeah. Yeah, once Zerg gets that fourth base, as you were saying, right, they, Zerg, the Zerg gets so strong. You know, there, there's two there's two power spikes, so to speak, for Zerg, right? One is when they get their Defilers, they can really, really put uh, push the Terran army back using the Dark Swarm spell and the Plague. The second big power spike is when they get their fourth gas. That's when they can start making so many Ultralis and Lings mm -hmm. and Defilers at the same time, right? And Terran really has a hard time dealing with that, right? That late game composition from Zerg. Ooh, look at this. Irradiates going down on the, on the Mutalist. Okay, the this is exactly what Terran needed. So once the vessels are out, those Mutalists, like we said, like just not long for the world. The Irradiate is so effective against the Mutalist. But here we go. The action is now taking that uh, fourth base location with his Lurkers and the Filer. And he's going to be yeah, able to cast I... a Dark Swarm. And the Irradiate, how much Irradiate does he have? Not enough here. Yeah, he needs 75 uh, energy. Yeah. Not enough. So Zerg will be able to get the fourth, I think. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't really see how Light can break it at this moment. Yeah, Dark Swarm going off. Well, Light is setting up his own third base, and he's going to try to contain the Zerg here, but, um, you know, as you were saying, the Zerg getting this fourth gas, that could be devastating here for Light. He needs to get his, uh, you know, macro going if he's going to compete with Zerg at this late game stage. Good irradiate going off, but the the filer you know shooting off another plague before it, uh, getting finished off by that irradiate. Yeah, man, dark swarm is just so good, man. <laughs> yeah, a couple of lurkers under dark swarm doesn't matter if you have like eighty marines. <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah, all he has to do now is shut down drops and stop maybe the the Terran from mass expanding, and the Zerg is sitting pretty on these four gas. Yeah. What um, can the Terran, Terran do is, to break it? Yeah, Terran is actually going dropships, um, just as you were saying, right? Like two, uh, two dropships coming out. Uh, whenever you get dropships in this kind of situation, I mean, I think it's good for Terran, but it's also kind of a gamble because the Zerg Mutalists are still out in force. And when the Zerg Mutalists, I mean, he's still got a force of like, you know, like let's say eight Mutalists, yeah. which action does, right? It really, really hampers that drop, like mm -hmm. that dropship play, right? You really... You wanna, you want like to really use the dropships when the Mutalists have been basically removed from the field, right? Well, and, uh, yeah, you're definitely right about that. The Mutal ideally, you've taken out the Mutalists by now. That right, being said, yeah, there's so... plenty of vessels out there, and you know, we Light is basically one of the best TVZ players, so he may be able to make this, uh, you know, work here somehow. He's trying to put pressure onto this uh, top left base right now, and he's got his vessels over there. They're just going to start irradiating everything. Nice plague on the on the vessels. Uh, it's going to come down. Up. Yeah, it's going to come down to some scourge, I think. 
going down against these drop ships. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can deny drops with Scourge as well, right? But uh, sometimes the Terran will matrix the drop ships. But anyway, hold that thought. Uh, look at the natural desert. Yeah, and dropping drop a couple of Marines there, and then more into the main. And here are the Mutalists, as you were mentioning. They're making short, short work of this drop. Yeah, this is a disaster, unfortunately, for Light. Completely. Oh, powdered. but he's got a new group into the uh, Zerg. Uh, top left base somehow, so he's got two drops going on, and he's sending in a new group of marines actually over here and trying to bust into the main uh, down here in the bottom left. And he may actually get this bust. He's uh, there's just barely not enough marine medic, and now Light has kind of thrown away all of his units. Uh, but look, look at the natural. Look at the natural. Yeah. Light pushing hard on the natural. Can he do it? Can he? Yeah. Can he he's got a chance. He's got reinforcing marines now, and he's got one vessel with three HP. So maybe that'll come in handy. Uh, but here come the ultralists with their upgrades. Uh, can action clean this up, or has light actually broken through? That's what we're gonna see. But there actually dark is a dark swarm up, which is huge. Uh, at this Dude, point. Look at that! Do you see the medic block on, on the on, on the natural, forcing the ultras to kill the the medics before engaging the marines and his natural. Mm -hmm. Only a few marines left though against this many ultras. Here we go though. There is another drop heading into the uh, top left base for Zerg, and this is kind of the last gasp I think for Light. It doesn't look like there's very much left for him on the mini map, uh, trying to pressure the Zerg. Yeah, I, I, I do agree uh, with you 100% uh, Royal Blue. Light really, like, he threw the dice, right, basically while going for these massive drop trips, and he got some damage done, but it's definitely not enough, man. It's yeah. definitely not enough. And he's falling apart. I mean, you, you can look look at the supplies. When the Zerg is even on supplies with Terran mm -hmm. in this matchup, you, you know it's a bad sign, right? You know it's definitely a bad sign for, for Terran. And yeah. Terran did expand and he's he's got uh, good production with his, all of his barracks, but look at how many uh, ultralists there are on top of his marines. So what are the marines to do basically? He's building a bunker, but the marines are just dying one by one. Yeah, things are looking dicey. They're now flooding units across the map. He's going to hit two bases simultaneously, or at least he's He's going to try to actually heals off the northern attack. And he looks like he's just going to try to hit the... Was that like the 2 o'clock base? Would you say it was the 3 o'clock base? Yeah, 3 o'clock base over here. Uh, in the middle right. We see the... Uh, the Zerg engaging here with the Terran and forcing back the uh, SCVs. So actually this command center is lifted off now. There's no more mining going down here at this base, so Terran down to basically one base mining at this mineral only. GG is called by light. And action takes another game. Yeah, some really nice play from both of our players, but action ultimately ending up the winner there. So. Thank you all for joining us in this video for StarCast TV. I'm Royal Blue and my co-caster Shuma Doom. We thank you all for watching and have a good one. We'll see you in the next video.